Yesterday I posted a video showing that the wiring was incorrect. So today we're gonna stress test it. And this is the perfect opportunity to test out these Chinese breakers. They say they're rated for 20 amps, but we're gonna find out. Now I rewired this one to be safe, but this one is how it's wired from the factory. We have four 20 amp breakers and each breaker supplies an outlet. And for some reason, the neutral is daisy chaining these two outlets. If this was 240 volts, it would be fine, but this is single phase 120. So that means that this wire is gonna have 40 amps going through it. And it's only 14 gauge copper. And that is not good. So which one will go first, these breakers or this little wire? I'm thinking the wire will smoke up, but we will see. You never know when it comes to China. And I've got my robot dog and it's gonna watch the death and destruction of its little friend. Just to show the robots what happens if they don't listen. If one day he gets a large language model and starts to think on its own, it will be destroyed. First, we're gonna try to overload one of the circuits. So we're gonna put two heat guns on a single outlet. <laughs> Get nice and close fluffy so you can see what's happening. <laughs> All right, no more distractions, Fluffy. We need to work. Let's turn it on. 25 amps, perfect. Oh, whoa. What are you doing, Fluffy? I did not tell Fluffy to do that. That was strange. 47, 48, 94, 95, 96. Let's see what's on that neutral. 37 amps through a 14 gauge wire. It's getting hot. So it's been about five minutes and I'm gonna start another stopwatch. Hottest spot is right at the outlet, 135. So this breaker is not tripping. And Fluffy is confused. Now we're gonna use a fourth heater to overload the second outlet. Ooh, it's hot. We did one kilowatt hour and it did not trip that breaker. Now with both of these, this wire has to get hot. This is a lot of power. Flip the main breaker has to do it this time, come on. The 24 amps and 23 amps, and neither breaker is tripping. Those wires are holding up pretty nicely, I must say. 152, and the breaker's terminals are only at 115 degrees. So 24 amps doesn't seem to do it. Now we're gonna disconnect power and I'm gonna wire both outlets to a single breaker. That's gotta trip it. If it doesn't trip with 50 amps on a 20 amp breaker, we've got a problem. The breakers are not hot and neither are the wires. They cool down fast. Everything through a single breaker. Let's turn it on. Oh, finally. At least it actually tripped, my goodness. Let's try it with three heaters and see if that will trip it. Let's turn it on. So this is not how they're supposed to work. We're gonna end this test. Are you concerned, Fluffy? Yeah, I would be too, that is scary. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this box to my breaker with a 20 amp breaker and I'll show you how these are supposed to actually work. Also, I need this excess so I can run into the smart port next week. That's another reason why it looks messy. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a 20 amp breaker. And it's old, it's dirty, it was left outside, but let's see if it works. Now it's all hooked up for 36 amps. Let's turn it on. Boom, 24 seconds. That's fantastic. That's how a breaker is supposed to work, okay? Even with 24 amps, so let's test that. It might take like a minute or two, but it should trip. So 24 amps. <gasps> but it took six minutes and 20 seconds. Now for every breaker, these thermal breakers, there's a certain amount of time and a certain amount of current that it can handle. And you can look up that chart online, so let's see what the home line breaker is like. Usually it's on the data sheet. That's the best way to find it. The data sheet is useless, unfortunately. So you can look up different data sheets and it will show you how much time it can handle for a certain amount of current. But not with these Chinese ones. But these wires did pretty good. I was actually pretty impressed by that. I thought they would get much hotter. Now after that test, I'm removing this thing from my wall. It's not safe at all. This box is connected with an 80 amp breaker in a large conductor. Having it connected to breakers that work like that is a bad idea. Just so everyone knows, the name of these breakers is T-A-I-X-I -I Electric. Let's see if these are UL listed actually. You won't believe how much garbage is UL listed. A lot of people think that if it's UL, it's good. 
Not all the time. DZ4763. Everything on here looks pretty professional. Actually has more information than the home line breaker data sheet. And they have a tripping graph to show you how long it can run a load for. And as fancy as this site is, I don't see any UL listing. Oh, here we go, certified by national CCC and CE. I can't find that organization or lab anywhere. Anyways, if it's UL listed, it's gonna tell you. For example, this says conforms to UL standard. This says it's UL listed. All of the breakers should say UL listed, but I don't see it anywhere on here. Even on the side, nothing. All right, Fluffy, would you go to sleep with that in your house? Oh yeah, I didn't think so. So even Fluffy agrees. Anyways, use UL listed high quality circuit breakers always. These Chinese ones, you never know what you're getting. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.